Hi, this is Maria. <clears throat> I have some uh, different projects to show you today. I found these uh, plain canvas uh, pouches or bag on Amazon. They're very sturdy, but about eight inches by five. Uh, they would fit like a phone and uh, some keys and some money and maybe a passport. So I decided to um, make my own uh, design for them. So I dyed them with uh, with the inks uh, and they when they're dry they, it does not come off the fabric. First I wash them to get the fabric sizing out so that the ink would stay uh, and take better. So I have this one pouch I decided to show you how I embellished it with fabric collage. So I have some hand painted fabric that I used uh, alcohol inks, I used acrylic paints, all kinds of different uh, media on the fabric to be able to use my own design. So I have a whole stash of fabric like this. You can take any cotton fabric and uh, dye it pretty easily. <clears throat> so uh, I, I made the back panels slightly smaller so that I can embroider around the edges because you have the inside seams on the pouch to consider. You can't really use a um, sewing machine for this project because the opening is too tight to get it to where it needs to go on the machine. It's hard enough to sew it by hand, but um, you can really get your own uh, by Sewing a lot by hand, you can really get your own uh, design very easily. So I'm using also fusible web to attach the fabric to each other. I will show you later. <coughs> so actually, you can see I added many different elements. And here I have no clue what I'm going to put down except had like that pyramid uh, shape or triangle. It didn't stand out so much, so I decided to put uh, some yellow behind it to make it uh, stand out more. This is a very stiff uh, fabric with acrylic paints uh, on the yellow part. I think the other fabric is painted with inks. I put spray um, inks in spray bottles and then I would spray it. Here's a bought element, it's like a piece of uh, frog. I had thought of putting that on my design, but it somehow doesn't fit. I don't know, it's too busy for the soft background that exists here already. So I guess it will go on a different project. And here I am debating there's always a lot of debating wh whether uh, things go together, but that's where you have to trust your feeling. What what do you like? Does it look good? Does it look cohesive? Does it look like it has a little bit of interest? So somebody's painted fabric has its original pattern shining through. So as you can see, I am experimenting with shapes and also where to place them. That is always uh, a challenge. It's a fun challenge. It's different than putting uh, paint on paper. So I'm still debating about that uh, rectangle. I couldn't decide where it had the most impact. Sometimes surrounding or added uh, elements will decide for you because 
it's about the harmony of the whole, but also what makes uh, the piece interesting. What can you put there to have different uh, colors and shapes go together? You can't really go wrong if you trust your instincts. So I'm using my tacky glue to make a, a perfect circle in the blue here. It's also spray painted. I think that was acrylic paints actually in spray bottles. It is the easiest to work with cotton. I have um, painted some lace, but it it's not it barely shows because nylon and other uh, polyester plastic fabrics uh, tend to not accept dyes very well. As I watched this, I was thinking of um, moon or sun over uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza. <laughs> Why not, right? You got the red sun, sunshine, the heat waves coming off of the sand. Bright details go a long way. I felt like a need for uh, some brighter spot. Everything is pretty much uh, color coordinated and pretty soft. I wanted a little bit of a contrast. Here I have the same fabric as the base uh, bottom panel that was painted. And this is like it was started off uh, off white with a pattern. White can always give a pretty uh, neat um, contrast. Here I had another pink fabric. I, I wasn't too thrilled about it. Again, you look and you feel, does this look right? You can't really go wrong with it. It's just, uh, it's your own design. Now that was just too much information there. That would actually have been pretty. That's so hard when you have several things you kind of like, which one do you choose? I usually go with the one that uh, has the most, uh, that is most effective in the design. Here I was thinking maybe I could make that into a flower and make that into a stem, but it's too, it was too straight. in my opinion. I 
sometimes if it's hard to get it just so it's good to walk away from it and come back a half hour later and see what seems most effective. I can usually pretty much narrow the fabrics down to a couple that I feel would go in the space intended. So then I have to decide about which of the two. So I went with the white here. So the next step is to fuse these elements to the back panel. So I have a fusible web here. Here's the pellens. It's called the Wonder Web. Pellens, you can buy it at any fabric store. It doesn't cost very much. You cut out the shape or the fabric that you're wanting to fuse to another fabric. It's okay if it's a little bigger than, than it was uh, than the original shape because uh, the web actually melts with the heat from the iron. So you work from the bottom up or out, bottom out. So here I'm, I'm doing the pyramid and each piece gets its own web. So then I ironed all these pieces together to the bottom panel. As you can see, there's a very strong uh, ad adhesion. I did not do it to the ribbon, as I will talk to you about that later. But now I want to embroider around the shapes to really keep them attached to the background in a very sturdy way since the bags will be used and they uh, don't, you know, you want everything to hold up really well. I'm using embroidery floss and I'm using, they come, they come in six strands. So I take them apart and use two strands at a time for my embroidery here. Sometimes they all snarl up uh, like this one did, but if you go carefully and pull at the other end at the same time, they usually part pretty easily. And you're not uh, end of the floss there. And I'm starting at the bottom and I'm going around the first uh, the top pyramid shape there. And I'm just doing like a simple basting stitch. It's supposed to be whimsical and boho or not uh, elegant and and perfect. So there I've done around the, that and I'm going to show you how to do this stitch. I don't know what it's called. But you go down and then you go up on the yellow part. And twist uh, or take the needle around the, the loop there.
and then you keep going and then each time you you twist or take the needle through the loop so you get a continuous uh, like thread all around It is a very common embroidery stitch. You can use any uh, stitches like chain stitch or just uh, plain uh, hemming stitch. As you can see there, I I, I tie off the, <clears throat> the back and pull the embroidery floss through the, the past uh, stitches on the back just to secure the end so it will not unravel and there's just a very simple stitch where you would attach two pieces together and here's uh, i'm using some stas on uh, permanent ink and I am stamping the words dream on the fabric. It's not as easy to stamp on fabric as it is on paper, so I make sure by trying each letter on a piece of paper and then pushing down hard, make sure it gets well inked and then press down. I also used some um, wooden <clears throat> stamps and stamped a spiral in the sun and a dragonfly on the pyramid. You can't really see it real well. And now the piece is ready to go onto the bag. So I had a larger piece of fusible web here. I actually love the stuff. I bought, I bought two yards. So as you see, you have to work out the design on a back panel. If you did it directly on the back, it would just be <clears throat> difficult. Difficult to attach, difficult to sew. And here you have freedom to move around. So I attach this last bit uh, that's sticking out at the top it's with the fusible web uh, going with the back panel. Here I have fused it. So you can see it's very stable on there. Now I'm going to embroider around the edges. So let's try and I wanted some uh, more. Uh, contrast since it's pretty pale blue would be okay purple is just too much but I decided on a burgundy to go kind of with the background of the back panel when you sew you have to be careful not to fasten the inside seams of the pouch where you'll have a mess that you have to fix later so it's not easy to embroider around with that tight of a space but with some uh, determination you can do it so here I have embroidered on the edges except at the very top part there where the ribbon is going. You can use a fusible web for the ribbon, but it's a danger of, of burning or like melting it. I have almost melted it. They're made from nylon or some something. 
uh, that melts and it smells awful. So I decided to just from now on I am attaching them by hand. And that's good enough for uh, stability. So I, I used uh, some pins to hold it down and uh, I'm making sure that I'm sewing on top of the panel there that was not attached to the purse itself. And at the ends, I, I sew back and forth a couple of times just to fasten the very end of it. As you can see, uh, it's almost done and uh, I was very pleased with the outcome. It's a bluish bag. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have many different things on my blog. So check out my website. Thanks. Bye.